Okay, everybody, grab your pens and pencils, papers and notebooks. We're all going to school. Dream school, that is. This will be our time to remind ourselves that dreams are a wonderful source of information. They're useful in our daily lives for personal growth and transformation. Our instructor today is dream analyst Patricia Eltinge, who has spent decades to providing guidance through her unique gift of dream interpretation. She is also author of the book, The Dream Class. Know your dreams, know yourself. Welcome to the Dream Power Show, Patricia. How are you? Oh, Great to I, be here with you. I am fine. I'm so excited to be talking about dreams with you. And my first question actually is just, what got you interested in paying attention to your dreams? Well, I will first tell you, uh, uh, as a child, uh, I talk about it in my book, The Dream Class. Um, I was kidnapped and molested as a child. And I had what we called nightmares at the time uh, for many, many years. So I, I grew to be afraid to go to sleep at night. Later, jumped to being an adult after having gotten into the natural healing field on many levels. I ran a, a holistic health clinic uh, with my uh, former partner for many years, and I'm certified uh, herbalist, a certified iridologist, and master herbalist. And then I got deeper into psychology and became a transactional analyst, and then refined my work into the dream work, which that was where I, I really flourished and really felt like that's where I was needed to help others because of my own previous training and uh, seeking as a young person in my 20s, 30s of uh, alleviating my anxieties from my, my dreams and realized then I had uh, suffered from PTSD and, but it got me deeper into into the study of dreams and transactional analysis. So I am a transactional analysis practitioner and specifically a dream expert. And, and one of the things that I think you said in your book and talking about nightmares is that you prefer not to call them nightmares, but just scary images. That's so right. talk about that. Okay, well, nightmares portray seem the connotation of a nightmare is something bad but our, my adage is all dreams wish us well because there are messages that are being given to us from our subconscious mind bubbling through to our conscious mind to help us with our personal growth and transformation so there might be scary images coming up for us but those scary images are just emphasizing that this is an important thing to look at and have it studied. Now, we don't, the dreams seem to be, they're not what they seem to be. So people think they're one thing, but actually there are symbols and archetypes and our dreams come to us in different symbols, symbolically. So it's sort of like, um, finding a message in a bottle that came from thousands of miles away and you're so excited to see what that message is but it's written in greek so you come to a translator to translate the message okay so the messages come in in forms different forms and every symbol in the dream has a masculine or feminine energy. This is Jung's work, Carl Jung, the famous psychoanalyst. And so my work at springboards off of Jung, and I believe Jung would be doing this work if he were to continue. But anyway, so the masculine and feminine in all of us comes through in our dream work. So the masculine images would be things like uh, a horse, um, a dog, uh, a tree. Okay, those 
those portray uh, masculine images and masculine things uh, represent our productivity and our, our work, um, the way we think, the way we do things. Whereas feminine symbols are, let's say a, a cat, um, a, a fuzzy bird, a little fuzzy toy, things like that. So that would be a feminine Im image. And that would be representing our feminine, our feeling centeredness. And so when things were, sometimes we're talking about how we feel about something, we're dreaming about something, we think or how we're doing something. So we can be talking about our workplace, we can, or we can be um, talk, uh, dreaming about uh, how we're really feeling about circumstances and things, our relationships. So that being said, the, uh, the images also come in term, and I go through this in the book step by step, um, because I teach this work to therapists and uh, I, I do workshops for other therapists to, to understand this in a very um, methodical way. Anyway, so the images, not only do they have masculine and feminine energies uh, de depicting our own masculine and feminine sides, they come in terms and a hierarchy of people, nature, and things. So the lower part of the hierarchy is things, which would be, okay, a table, a car, solid things in life. And that you're the furthest away from getting the message. As it bubbles through a little higher in the hierarchy, we uh, dream in uh, symbols that would be nature. Nature will be animals, landscape, things like that, trees, lakes, okay, nature, uh, weather. Then as we get closer to really being ready to understand the message, we're dreaming of people. So that's the top of the hierarchy as it's bubbling through from our subconscious to our conscious mind. I want to go back a second to what you just said about you know the, this hierarchy that you talked about. So does that mean that, for example, if if you have a dream about you know a, a rock or a, a car or something like that, it's not as important a dream as a dream about a person? Not at all. No, it's you're just it's further away from uh, getting the message. It's just starting to bubble through. It will eventually your dreams come in in uh, um, uh, waves or in um, uh, a series. So you'll sometimes you'll be dreaming uh, for a while about a rock or what you just said, a car, these things like a car, by the way, is it represents your way through life. So depending on the kind of car it is, your rickety old car, and it's like breaking all the time, what's wrong with your way through life? Think, but when you're thinking about things, it's you're not quite ready to get the message. So we keep ourselves open and uh, chapter um seven in the book is how to capture your dreams. I, the, one of the biggest, uh, most common statements I get is I don't dream. Mm -hmm. Or if I do, I don't remember my dreams. Mm -hmm. So I, I teach technique, techniques on how to capture your dreams. And uh, here's your takeaway for your fans today, you and your fans, whoever is listening. Uh, keep a pad by your bed. Some people keep like a recording device, but you know what? There's nothing like an old fashioned pad and pen because you can refer back to it more easily and you can keep a log of your stuff that's coming up through. And, and so you keep a pad by the bed. You tell yourself as you're going to sleep, I'm going, this is, the, this is the, the very beginning stage. I'm going to remember my dream, my dreams. I'm going to remember my dreams because at the stage between wake and sleep and sleep and wake, it's called the Lyman state. It's the state of consciousness between sleeping and waking. So, and it only lasts three to four minutes. So when you tell yourself you're going to remember your dream, you keep the pad and pad by the bed. Upon waking, you don't open your eyes. 
you are in the Lyman state. You catch you you catch yourself waking up. You know, you wake up in the morning. You first thing you want to do is open your eyes. If you don't open your eyes, the second you open your eyes, you're out of the Lyman state. If you keep your eyes closed, you can remain in the Lyman state for three to four minutes maximum. So that's when you can capture the dream. So you know where your pad is next to you. You scribble, oh, I saw a cat, just put cat, mm, mountain, tree, that's enough. You then can, when once you open your eyes and wake up, you can start saying, oh yeah, there was a, I was in the mountains and a cat crossed my path and da da da. And there's a little story there. But if you get the key symbols that you saw upon waking while you were in that Lyman state, this is how you develop your, your dream reading technique. So that being said, you don't have to do anything at first, but uh, capturing your dreams is the initial part of it. So you can then go to another stage and learn from a book or a, a dream reader like me, and you then can learn how to decipher the symbols and then relate to what aspect of my life, what part of my femininity is, you know, up in, why am I vacillating between my, my head and my heart, you know, with it in the mountains and a cat, do, 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 do you. So there are ways that then we can help you translate these images, but dream, dreaming and learning to capture your dreams is like, it's like learning an instrument. When you learn an instrument, you have to practice. So I, I tell people, I have people been working with me for years and years before when they said they never dreamt and now they're all, whoa, these flourishing dreams with what they have become, what I do is help people get in touch with their own sixth sense. So when you become really in touch with your dream life, you are really honing your own sixth sense, being in touch with it. And that's what the techniques bring you to. So it's like learning how to play the guitar, learning how to play tennis, learning how to golf. You don't just go there and think you can do it. Oh, no, absolutely. Have... It's you know, I, I always also equate it to like exercising and getting your muscles in shape. You know, you practice. You have to repeat it. You have to repeat it to you get practice. it. So we keep oh. this pad by the bed for ye ever, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, forever. <laughs> I have volumes of. So when you're looking at dreams, do you just look at one dream at a time or do you look at several to find a pattern first? I find they come in, in patterns. And again, uh, a, lot of a lot of times in threes, really you'll, you'll have a, a person will have three dreams once they get better at remembering them because they, they, it's starting to bubble through at the lower levels first with symbols that seem more abstract. And then the second dream, but the theme will, the running theme will be the same. One of my clients ha, has a, um, a business he's involved with, with partners. And he might be dreaming, and, and but he, he's also a boater. So a lot of things are, it, things in his dream are, are boats and things like that. He relates to that. So this is why the old dream in, um, dictionaries really don't work because dreams are individual and we have individual things we relate to. So this fellow relates to boats. So even though it's about his business, his business is his boat is going down a highway. Well, that's very abstract, but that, so then it, then the next dream would be then by the third dream, 
it, the, the people, people are in the dream, but they're really aspects of himself because everything in your dreams is an aspect of yourself. So he is in a situation at one time where a lot of decisions, it was a, a very big company and a lot of decisions had to be made. So the partners are this, some of them want this way to go. And some of them want, sounds like our government want this way to go. Some want this way to go. And when he comes to the meeting, he's got all this clarity of what he really has this, has come to clarity through this dream work. And they said to him on both sides, they said, what are you some kind of like psychic all of a sudden? And he, they knew and they followed his lead and it was the right decision because he, he knew between his instinct, which is feminine feeling centeredness and his, his intellect, which is his intuition, he's able to connect the dots of how he feels and how he thinks with the what's going on in the outside world. And it really is honing your sixth sense. Patricia, I'm just wondering, uh, you know, not every dream that everyone has every night is going to have a deep meaning or have great, great insights. But have you ever had what I would like to call a great dream that you keep coming back to that stays with you? Yes, absolutely. And th those are the most impacting. But sometimes people really overlook something that seems insignificant. Sometimes it's just one symbol. And I, and I talk about it in my book, I had a symbol and it was just an image in a room of a cat dehydrated, looking, it looked like it was dehydrating and dying of dehydration or something. It was all shriveled, shriveling up like this and his tongue hanging out. And that's all the dream was. It seems like a nothing dream. There was no scenario. It, was, it didn't seem like a big deal, except it was a very dramatic image. Well, it was a time in my life many years ago, 30 something years ago, where I was really overdoing it, over committing. And that told me my feminine was being neglected. My feminine side, I was not taking care of my body. The body is feminine. The mind is masculine. So I was doing everything to succeed, be successful, be business, do, 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 do. And it was a very sharp image and an awakening, but it was just one little image in the dream. I have just time for one final question, which is how can people find out more about you and your work? Well, the website is up. <laughs> it's Mercury and retrograde, but it's back up now. It's thedreamclass.com. My book is, again, The Dream Class. Know your dreams, know yourself. And my name, Patricia L. Tinge, and the dream class can be found on Amazon and all five-star reviews are welcome. We've been speaking with dream analyst, Patricia L. Tinge.